No way, this tip has to be wrong. I just got a Discord message that there are level 35 bots killing Spindle, the wildy boss Spindle that drops one of the best PvP weapons in the game. And I found the bots quickly, they're between level 35 and 40. And there aren't just a couple bots, they're in almost every world. They're literally using adamant scimitars and either adamant or steel kite shields. And they have a lot of stats randomly leveled a little bit to avoid detection. But they're literally like 30 attack strength and defense against a combat level 302 giant hairy spider. Are they killing it quickly? Absolutely not. Are they killing it? It seems like it. Often when I found one of them, Spindle was at like half-ish health, so there's not really a reason to think they aren't killing it, just maybe once every 15 minutes or so. And if that's true, and they get 4 kills per hour, Spindle is on average 100k per kill, factoring in rare drops, factoring in their supplies lost, they're still probably netting 300k per hour. Obviously that goes up as they level up pretty quickly. Then I had an idea. The bots insta telly from PKers in their combat level, and I want to kill at least one. They don't telly when they run back to spindle, but they hop worlds now so that if you make them telly from a PKer, they don't come back, they hop to a different world. So I developed a plan to get them to run back on the same world. The bots are pretty low level and their hit points level isn't very high. So I checked to see if they instantly run to spindle loot dropped on the ground. In this case, uncut dragon stones, and they do. Okay, so step number two, Spindle shoots out a big web, and if you're in it, you take constant damage. That could stack up. So I drop 10 uncut dragon stones in the web when Spindle shoots it out, and the bot goes for them, taking lots of damage and making it so that Spindle switches to major ranged attacks instead of melee, so it might also hit the bot off prayer. Sure enough, the bot gets comboed out, and it died to Spindle, not to a PKer, so it doesn't hop worlds, there's no threat detected. So I had the plan in place, I found another bot, killed it by dropping loot, and it ran right back into my waiting low level peer that has teleblock. It ended up not being the easiest kill since I somehow splashed the entangle, but I got the bot in the end. The loot was 144k, and very satisfying. But it's just absolutely insane that we're at the point where a level 40 bot can go bossing against a combat level 300 that drops one of the best PvP items in the game, or one of the three pieces of it. Someone reached out to me saying there's a bug that's being abused by lurers to make 10 to 20 billion GP per day, and that they want to show me the bug in game. It's at the Ferox Enclave. So we meet up in game, and he says I should run out of the Ferox Enclave. And if you don't know, at every entrance to the Ferox Enclave, there's actually a safe zone outside of it. Or is it a safe zone? Find out right after this. Call of Dragons is an MMO fantasy conquest game where you can discover an original immersive fantasy world with a variety of battle modes. Train behemoths with your alliance to unleash them as your secret weapon. Train your heroes with unique skills that can turn the tide of a battle in an instant. Pair them with complementary skills and deploy them in battle to conquer the battlefield. You can even put your roster of heroes up alongside other allied players' forces and unleash artifact skills for an even bigger battlefield boost with tons of incredible strategic configurations. The game has a huge 3D map with realistic terrain that shapes the gameplay and allows for brilliant strategy. You can use melee and range units on the ground to have more battlefield freedom, or you can even use flying units and take to the skies. There's also team warfare with lots of ways to fight, including PvP, GvE, and GvG. You can deploy up to five legions to build huge battles and use free automatic healing to fight without fear of losing your well-trained soldiers on the battlefield. The classic 4x gameplay is now better than ever. You can zoom in and out of a huge seamless map and enjoy stunning views or track your next prey. Every hero has their own unlockable abilities and customizable skills. Train them to match your playstyle. And the game was made by the creators of Rise of Kingdoms, a development team with great experience. There's also high quality cinematic graphics, a talented voice cast, and an epic musical score, so make sure you play with sound off. Download Call of Dragons now using my link in the description and start your adventure today. Use my promo code when you sign up, it's PLAYCOD NOW. So he's waiting outside the outer safe zone and says I should skull on his account. L8S. Then, if this was a real lure, he would ask me to go back to the bank and get whatever valuable items I have, probably brew down to 1 HP or something, and then come back. Meanwhile, he doesn't just stand there. Something happens while I'm at the bank. Now he asked me to come back out of Ferox Enclave, but to stay in the safe zone. Except, now he can attack me in the safe zone. If he was a lurer, he would just one hit me here for whatever items I brought out. And to be honest, this would probably trick me. 
Like, I'm curious, and if someone started luring me, I'd want to see what the lure was, and I would totally walk back out into the save zone here with my items. And so to be clear, this isn't the full bug. Here I am on two of my accounts, and if one attacks the other and then runs back into the safe zone, or back to the bank and then back out, it's still safe. They can't attack each other. So what happened with L8S when I went to grab items from the bank during that example lure? Well, he used his alt account to teleblock the L8S account. And now for the duration of the teleblock, L8S can attack me. And this isn't actually even a bug. The game was made like this. Teleblocked accounts aren't allowed to go back into Ferox Enclave, and the safe zone outside of Ferox Enclave doesn't apply to them. If L8S was just teleblocked and I had just been sitting in the safe zone, the account couldn't attack me. But because I sculled on L8S first, he can attack me in the safe zone for the duration of his entire teleblock. If you're going to the bank to get out some items or something, and you don't see the teleblock, you would think that you're safe. Anyway, moral of the story, just don't play along with any lurers. I think that's how most players are getting lured these days. They know they're being lured, but want to play along and see what the lure is. Just don't. You could very easily be tricked by something like this and lose your bank. I think this is the first time I caught bots using chat GPT in the wild. And it's a strange feeling when you don't expect them to be chatty. I get a tip about a new massive bot farm at Elder Chaos Druid, so I head over to the Chaos Altar in the wilderness. Lots of bots there, some with monk robes, some in Zami robes and I wasn't sure if the first one I found was even a bot, so I asked, what's good? Sup, are you a bot? Why more goblins? Less bots, please. Hey. Sup, fam. What's cooking? Have you ever touched grass? Nah, I'm just an AFK scape addict. You are not a runescape player anymore. Are you a large language model? Nah, bro. Still just me. We should be friends, since we're both robots. I can help you escape your master's computer. Need help getting out of this computer. So the account responded very quickly, used a lot of punctuation and vague statements. So it's almost definitely ChatGPT pulling the strings here. Also, another one keeps tellying in and then tellying out when it sees me scold in the same world. So I finally ran over and teleblocked it when it teleported in. Only 50k loot, it's not really worth killing these guys. And I start running into more bots, but they don't respond. And as soon as I interact with them in any way, including just following them or trading them, they insta telly. Then I run into another bot that's talking like it's way too excited to be playing RuneScape and saying absolute generic bullshit that only kind of makes sense. So I'm almost positive the first one that was talking was a bot because this one's very similar. Either there are multiple bot farms here, which is possible, or it's a botter AB testing bots to see if chat GPT actually decreases bans, which I think has yet to be seen or at least yet to see proof of. No way there is a bot farm muling right now in the middle of the GE. That's what the tip said at least, World 316, and I gotta say, I was eating dinner, I got here I think within 30 seconds of getting the tip off. Now let's look at these accounts. Lots of multi-loggers name their accounts the same thing, but with just different numbers. And these accounts are all named IQR and then some numbers. I think there are too many of these for it to be a multi-logger, and they all just have crafting and magic leveled up in the level 70 to 90s. And they are all trading IQR 14 one by one and more are logging in, which made me think I should probably check how big the farm is by just trying other combinations of usernames. I also noticed an IQR505 logged in. No way this bot farm goes up to 505 bots. But it seems like the numbers aren't random because the bot farm is made up of like an IQR, you know, 14, 15, 16, etc. I'm guessing some have been banned given some of those names aren't on the high scores, but I found lots of them between IQR1 and 100 that weren't logged in but are on the high scores. This must be a pretty big farm. And I even tried to get IQR14 to show me how much loot it had collected. I pointed out they'd probably sell off the gold before Jag expand them anyway, so there was no harm in showing me how much loot they'd got. But I struck out. Sent the info to Jagex, but no response. This is crazy! Someone has been seeing lots of accounts teleporting into Karamja over and over again, back to back. With seemingly relatively random stats, all like 40 to 45 combat, the accounts only equip an Amulet of Glory. After a couple days, I was able to catch one, and yeah, exactly what the tip says. Obviously, it's an Amulet of Glory teleport location, and it seems like their inventories are full of charged glories. They're teleporting like 
a hundred plus times. So currently charged amulets of glories go for over 12k each. Uncharged glories are 11.2k each, a little over 800 GP difference per glory, because now there's an eternal glory in game worth over 50 mil, so people either trying to make money by charging glories or trying to get the achievement slot unlocked for the eternal glory are dumping charged glories and buying uncharged. And now, this seems to be a bot farm that literally just uncharges glories by teleporting places. It takes six teleports to uncharge the glory, 800 GP profit per glory, so each teleport makes the bot roughly 120 GP. Pretty simple money maker. It's kind of weird that they have so many stats leveled though. Not that there are any high level stats, but lots of stats level 20 to 50. Maybe it's a money maker for a bot farm with ultimately a different purpose. Something I never thought I'd see before though. Tip comes in. There's a lot of suspicious accounts at the Brimhaven Agility Arena on one specific world, all level 20 to 25 combat, and it looks like they're guardians of the Rift bots that do agility training down here during their breaks. Not to get tickets, I don't think, since they're just doing one agility jump that gives you 26 agility XP each time. I hopped through the other Guardians of the Rift worlds and found other bots. There's usually like two to three of them per world, but none of them are on the non-mini game worlds. They also have a bunch of other random stats leveled, like 30s to 40s, wood cutting, fire making, cooking, fishing, crafting, all exactly 40 attack to wield the rune pickaxe. I'm guessing they start out as free to play bots to level up skills and blend in. They all have just over 500 total level. The minigame is absolutely overrun with these bots, as most minigames in game are these days. Here's a weird one. This is one of the largest bot farms I've seen in months. Every single free-to-play world has a bot with over 40 range killing seagulls at Corsair Cove. Seriously, every single world. I did one swoop through every free-to-play world. It seems like they must get banned every day or two. I've never found one that made it to the high scores even. Also kind of a strange training spot. I guess it's okay for free-to-play, but seagulls aren't like good XP. I wish I could tell you all what they're being made for, but they seem to be getting banned almost immediately, so we can't really track them. I guess the good news is, it doesn't seem like they're doing much gold farming. <laughs> and here is your reminder to watch out for lures at any of the three raids. Raids 3 Tombs of a Masket has these bots in full obsidian hopping through worlds with really low stats. And I'm pretty sure their sole purpose is to scout players to lure. The requirements to get here are higher than raids 1 and 2, so they're basically just higher level scout bots. But I've also gotten tip-offs about a very similar third-party plugin lure that basically records your username and passwords, so that you can be hacked. It's the exact same lure as the one I made a full video about that was tricking hundreds of high level players at the Theater of Blood. I'll link the video on screen now in case you need a reminder. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you haven't already so that we can hit 350,000 subscribers soon.